Hey everybody, welcome to Grim's Forge Gaming. Today we are going to cover my John Wick Combat Bowman. And I don't want to call him a bow ganker because the way we have this set up, we're very active in fights. We can uh, fight outnumbered and we have the resistances and the recoveries to do so. Let's jump right into the build. First thing that we are running is the Ring of the Wild Hunt. I think speed is very important for this build. And uh, when you read that one piece, increase your movement speed by 15% while in combat and increase your movement speed by 45% while out of combat. And you can see we still have the swift trait on there. So that's going to take us to 21% movement speed while in combat. And it's going to take us to 51% outside of combat. This is very important for the build, being able to relocate during a fight, stay ahead of large groups, and uh, try and get that vantage point that we want. And uh, for this particular build also, before we look at the armor sets, I've probably tested close to 20 different armor sets. There's so many cool things out there that we want to try and see how they work. And um, at the end of the day, it came down to the most simple of setups for the, my play style. I was able to rack up more kills, way more kills, with this setup right here, and you'll see why. But uh, anyways, in keeping it simple, we're actually running sets that I've used on other builds, and it's worked very well. The first armor set we're running is Shackle Breaker. The reason being is we need stamina recovery, we need magic recovery and we need some weapon damage and then we need a max line of both stamina and magicka for our night blade um, some of our abilities work off of magicka like our shady disguise being able to hop in and out of cloak or stealth and then uh, we need a lot of stamina obviously for our our rotation on people and so shackle breaker fit the bill for me and it does so on a lot of other setups and um, so what we were doing is during testing we were trying to pair shackle breaker with uh, some of the crazy proc sets and some of the different things out there and I didn't have anywhere near the success of just basically pairing it with eternal vigor and uh, eternal vigor right now is probably a best in slot armor set for so many different builds um, but it all came down to recoveries for this as long as we are in shadowy disguise we're avoiding damage we're relocating and we can pick and choose our fights and uh, when we talk about avoiding damage, we're on somebody's radar for a brief second as we get our uh, lethal arrow off right into our silver shards and then we're back in cloak and so it makes it very hard for them to tie us down and we have the stamina recovery and magic recovery if we were to uh, get pulled out of stealth with detect pots or anything like that we could dodge roll pretty uh, actively we could use our shade to disengage from the fight and it just came down to keeping it very simple uh, sure. keeping this build very simple and uh, just stacking our recoveries and not so much worried about our weapon damage um, I can tell you that um, a fun set was Sheer Venom. I have that right over here. When I ran Sheer Venom, um, you can see when you deal damage with an execute ability, so your lethal injection uh, is considered a, uh, an execute ability. It deals an extra basic 10,000 poison damage over six seconds. It's a lot of pressure, for sure. And it actually, it says uh, if they're under 100% health, it deals 100% more damage. It's a lot of pressure. Um, so if you wanted to pair Eternal Vigor with Sheer Venom, by all means, give it a go. I or Shackle Breaker with Sheer Venom. I tried it. Um, I had way more success actually, just completely going on the recovery side of things. Fun set though. Another thing to know about Sheer Venom is the dot on Sheer Venom for that six seconds you are not able to stealth um, so you can hit shadowy disguise and then when you hit crouch um, normally as a vampire you'll be able to go from shadowy disguise into crouch and then be sneaking well if you hit shadowy disguise and crouch but your sheer venom is still ticking on somebody the second uh, your shadowy disguise is up sheer venom pulls you out of stealth and so that was a problem another problem is uh, I, a I don't need any other things pulling me out of stealth it's hard enough to uh, 
um, fight uh, all the AOE and all the everything that's going on in the game. Um, but number two, Shadowy Disguise right now is not working 100% of the time, so maybe 50% of the time. And there's times where you'll hit it and um, you are immediately, um, it's almost like you didn't even hit it you're out of stealth and there could be nobody around you you could hit it and it doesn't take you into cloak and so for that reason um, to have any level of success on a um, combat bow like a knife blade bow build right now I needed to have a ton of resources recoveries and a ton of stats to be evasive dodge rolling uh, magnum shotting uh, then use my shade and be very creative with uh, creating space and so that's my little um, take on that. This was a fun set, but there's uh, negatives to it. We also tried running Hawk's Eye uh, paired with Marksman. And uh, if you look at Haw Hawk's Eye, it's got two lines of max stamina, some weapon damage, and reduce the cost and increase the damage of your bow build. And so this increases your bow damage by 6%. And then if you look at marksman marksman at the bottom reduce the cost of your stamina abilities by five percent and increase the damage of your bow abilities against players by eight percent and so hawk's eye with uh, marksman we were doing a lot of damage to people but we didn't have the max stats to stay in extended fights and so we were dying uh, after the second or third person that we killed uh, in the, the extended fights and I don't want that I want to be able to have eight people in front of me and we have a chance to kill all eight of them we're a combat bowman we're not a bow ganker and so that was kind of a problem um, for that particular setup we did try essence thief um, but it was dropping the rune by the target which I kind of knew that it was going to do that and um, we did try, uh, try uh, the Dre Kingslayer and we tried to do a bow bow type setup and um, once again good weapon damage good critical gave us major berserk at all times um, but no max stats and so every every single time that I ended up dying it was because I was out of stats I was either out of magicka or I was out of stamina and I was having to channel heavy attacks didn't have enough in the tank to dodge roll and so we are on this a combat bowman and uh, um, because we are focused on our recoveries and our resistances on this build our weapon damage will be a little less however we have made up for that and so couple things too I could probably squeeze out almost another hundred weapon damage here you can see this ring eternal vigor ring is still healthy now eternal vigor is a heavy armor setup let's talk about how this works when you drop a mythic item like the ring of the wild hunt on a build um, ultimately what that's going to do if you still want to keep two five piece armor sets it's going to break up your monster set okay there is a way to run a monster set and a mythic item set run one five piece on the front bar and us another five piece on the back bar if you want to be creative um and i did look into that um uh, running invigorating on the back bar but it just wasn't uh, wasn't really worth it not when you could have it all at the beginning with eternal vigor and shackle breaker together and so anyways when you have a ring of the wild hunt it breaks up your monster set and that's why we have um, one piece our, our helm is made uh, for shackle breaker and currently what we have right now is a medium armor velodreth for extra weapon damage because like i said once we put these armor sets together we saw that we were short on weapon damage so i was able to squeeze out a little bit more weapon damage here and we would squeeze out a little bit more weapon damage there also my bow is sharpened um, another thing that is a helpful tip for you guys right now if you're trying to be a bow anything um, the penetration is going farther than just the sheer weapon damage and um, I think it's mostly because of eternal vigor we've got a lot of other people that are like kind of gravitating towards a heavy armor setup and it's getting harder to really thump those people um, and so right now I've made the move from running Nern honed to sharpened and that move actually worked out a lot better for me I was getting more kills and there's a lot of variables to that but anyways 
if you want to run Nern Hone, by all means do that, and you're going to get probably an extra two to 300 weapon damage. Um, yeah, your bow will be uh, 15... There you go, 1535 if you run Nern Honed, as opposed to 1335. So you'll get an extra 200 weapon damage, and then with medium armor scaling, um, you know, that'll work out really well. So, if this were Nern Hone, you could squeeze out an extra 200 weapon damage. If this were Nern Hone, you could squeeze, or uh, Nern Hone, if this were Infused, you could squeeze out roughly another 100. That's 300 extra weapon damage right there, so say another 400 weapon damage. Um, with medium armor scaling okay if you really want to push more weapon damage but I haven't had a problem killing people on this and not pushing the weapon damage so anyways uh, that's the armor sets let's look at the abilities here and we're just gonna buff up First thing to look at is our recoveries. You can see our magic recovery is at 2100. Uh, health recovery is at 842. 1605 on our stamina recovery. And uh, you can see our weapon damage is at 3000. And then it actually goes up to about 3400 when we come out of stealth. <clears throat> Let's verify here. All we're going to do is just stand up. Yeah, 3454. And so, like I said, we can get an extra uh, three to 400 weapon damage, um, which would put us at like 3,800 with the basic changes that we talked about. But um, this actually, the way I'm playing this, uh, once you see our abilities, it's working out really well. Uh, another thing to look at on the build, you can see our resistances. We're pretty beefy. Spell resistance at uh, just about 27,000. Physical resistance about 27,000. I'm not really worried about the weapon critical uh, per the percentage because we're guaranteed crits coming out of our shadowy disguise and so that's been working out really well you can see our max resistances or uh, max stats i'm sorry max magica is at 14,000, about 14 and a half our health is at nine or uh, 29,000, almost 30,000. that's actually as a matter of fact um Yeah, it'll go up to 30 just uh, by you with because of a passive. But um, so resistance-wise, we're we're pretty beefy. Uh, we are a Nord as well, so we're gonna get um, the Nord passives rugged. That's why we have such high resistances. And like I said, we are a combat bowman. Um, we're gonna be taking damage, but we're also gonna be giving damage, and we can chain kills together very easily with the kit that I've. Uh, ended up coming to um, our max stamina is on the low at 24,000 but it does not matter at all when you're pushing as high as recoveries as we have like I said um, our stamina recovery is ridiculously high for a um, combat bowman 2600 stamina recovery and so we can pull 24,000 I think it's like 22,000 in uh, BGs which is no problem in uh, no CP whatsoever because of this high stamina recovery the stamina recovery magic recovery allows us to be just ultra active on this build and dodge roll and cloaking and um, it's very rarely a resource issue in uh, extended fights we have multiple ways to disengage and let's look at the abilities here. We're going to kind of explain a couple things here. Uh, Tooltip wise, lethal arrow, and it's going to hit for 11,000, a little more than that. 7,500 on our silver shard, still leveling it. Magnum shots, our hard CC, 6,200. And we're running Reaper's Mark, and I'll explain why we're running Reapers. And then we've got a 56,000 uh, tooltip on our ballista. And uh, so that that's pretty nice. It, the thing about Ballista too that I like is I can just drop it on the ground and it's going to do work and then I can go back into my regular rotation and so um, and we'll get to this pretty regularly because of my rotation um, we get the ultimate up enough to to pull this off often at 183 ultimate and so that's pretty nice um, and let me buff up again Yeah. 
tooltips 1900 on our relentless focus um, that's pretty nice on we've got that on our two hand bar but basically I hear when it procs and then we'll release that and we are running leeching strikes so we're gonna get some stamina back and health back and then you'll see that little boost of stamina uh, that comes in after the fact and that's nice we're using shadow image this is important if you're um, fighting um, especially a 1v1 situation always get your image down then move away from your image if nothing else because your image is going to do a little bit of damage but it, it applies minor maim to the target so they're doing 15% less damage to you and um, we'll buff up again also after this stick around I've got some BG footage you can see me testing uh, all these various builds 15k on our resolving vigor over four seconds and then we're running rally for our major uh, brutality minor endurance and a burst heal and then I'm leveling undo we'll end up picking up temporal guard um, but this is just another level of uh, trickery you know being able to slip uh, groups of people or being pursued um, now I can tell you at 162 ultimate um, if I have an ultimate available and it's a 1v1 situation I'm actually going to just try and finish them off um, because I like our chances but if we're outnumbered drastically and we need to slip some people we might actually set our shade run away from our shade draw everybody over to it then pour it back to our shade and if every if somebody stays at our shade or they go back to our shade we'll turn around and hit undo and zip right back to where we were and then cloak and be gone and so there's really cool ways that you can synergize these two things together and uh, cause a lot of uh, location problems and in BG's currently too if you haven't noticed there's a lot of um, uh, rubber banding going on with those type of abilities it's very hard to track people that are are streaking or using any type of abilities like that right now so I don't know what's going on but anyways uh, those are the abilities like I said you don't need to push a ton of weapon damage on this build he's a combat bowman not a bow ganker but uh, we kill people with the bow uh, pretty easily nevertheless and um, another thing too you can see that our penetration is at 7700 um, almost 7800 and that penetration seems to be enough to actually do work on people um, and you know that would drop by almost 3500 if we went to Nern Hone because we'd lose the sharpened on our bow I think you need to be at 7500 right now against heavy armor people um, Another thing too, we're going to look at this. We're running lethal arrow. You could run uh, aim focus, fo um, the other morph to this. Uh, however, this one I'm not currently spec'd into defile, but you could bump up the um, uh, minor defile on this bow and uh, really affect their healing uh, for the next four seconds. Um, I think that's the play right now is affecting people's healing. Uh, there's because with the changes for Graymore, uh, the way health was coming, and a lot of people are in heavy armor, they're going to get heavy armor passives for healing received, plus they're going to have um, uh, eternal vigors, 1,000 health recovery kicking in when they fall under 50%. We're going to need to affect that some way. Also, by running lethal arrow and applying minor defile, you don't need to run a disease glyph on your bow. And as an example, um, I'm actually running a shock glyph, and a shock uh, glyph has a chance to apply concussed, which means that they'll have minor vulnerability, so they'll take even more damage. And so, if you're going to have lethal arrow, don't uh, put a disease glyph on your bow. There's really no reason for that. Um, anyways, unbuffed also uh, silver shards. You can't just the way I play this. I'm not just going to stand there and pluck lethal arrows uh, into somebody and hope they die. The combination is while the lethal arrow is being charged up, there's a cast time to it. You can see the one second cast time. You can actually be holding heavy attack uh, during that time frame. And then if you time the heavy attack properly, the heavy attack will release and connect the same time the lethal arrow does. Lethal arrow travels in an arcing motion to the target and your medium to heavy attack travels in a direct path to the target. And uh, if you time it, they'll hit at the same time. Plus your shock glyph will go off and you'll see three big hits on it. Also, if you time it, um, what I like to do is 
uh, hold a lethal arrow and a heavy attack, release those at the same time and immediately hit cloak um, to try and get that guaranteed crit on everything that lands. And so you'll see some really big numbers on people when you do that. Um, but because you can't just stand there and just pluck, 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 you know, with lethal arrows, that that's not a fun play style for me. The rotation is doing the lethal arrow to heavy attack um, and then come right into a silver shards. And it's nice having sh silver shards on your bar for a couple different reasons. Number one, it's a low cost and a good follow up after a lethal arrow. Uh, number two, you can see fires additional bolts at other enemies near you. Uh, initial target for 23% less damage than the hitting the initial target. So you get a little bit of splash from that. Um, but when you go and you look at the guilds, fighter guild ability, um, this right here, just by having this on your bar, you get an extra 3% weapon damage, um, and that's really nice. And then the other thing is your fighter guild abilities deal an additional 20% damage to Undead, Daedra, and Werewolf. So the tooltip that we had on this, 7500, um, is actually going to be increased by 20% against Vampires and Werewolves. And so it, it's a little misleading, it's actually going to get hit them harder than uh, advertised right and so that's pretty nice um, magnum shots are hard cc and i don't know what's going on with magnum shot right now i'll get the cc out of it but uh it's not going to knock them back eight meters it just stuns them right where they're standing so i don't know but anyways magnum shots how you line up a, a really nice burst and you want to keep this on people every six seconds and uh, it's the best we've got um, if you want to run fear here, run fear here. Um, fear will um, help you line up. Fear will fear them. It doesn't do damage to them. Magnum shot does do damage to them. And so uh, that's why I went with magnum shot. Plus when the knockback works, it creates the space you need to continue to do work as a combat bowman. So shadowy disguise is the play right here to hop in and out of stealth however i am going to try because we have 30k health i'm going to try a dark cloak version of this and see what that feels like um and if that's viable and uh then we are running reaper's mark on uh, our front bar and very similar to john wick when he's got a marked target you know he always gets the kill right this was very important and um you can make an argument for camo hunter in this spot but here's how it shook out number one you're not going to be activating uh, camo hunter so the cost on that's not that big of a deal at 40 uh, 4200 stamina um, but you gain major savagery increasing your weapon critical that is okay but it doesn't really matter for the because we are getting guaranteed crits from stealth okay so that's just kind of a, a mild bonus or plus to this. The other thing is you gain minor berserk for five seconds after you deal critical damage from an enemy flank. And so we have to hit the enemy from one arm to the other somewhere on their back. And we're going to get an 8% damage bonus, okay, if we do that. And so that might be a thing. But on this, when a marked enemy dies, you heal for 18,000. That actually scales up. This is unbuffed. And you gain major berserk, increasing your damage done by 25% for 5 seconds. And this portion of the ability scales off your max health. So the thing about that, when you read that, um, oh, and the top part as well major fracture and major breach and so everybody's running around in heavy armor builds with uh, decent health recovery and recoveries um, we this is how we are actually able to push the weapon damage that we have and dispatch people fairly easy um, it's because either they're the first in the chain and we're just stripping their resistances and hurting their healing and applying minor vulnerability with our enchant, our shot glyph, and then lining up a proper burst against them. And that's how we dispatch them. Or they're the second or third in the chain of people and we've got major berserk so our damage output is increased by 25%. And so this is very important. Uh, um, another important thing about that is I don't need to kill that person. It says when a marked enemy dies. And so say I'm rolling up onto a fight. I see somebody is about to be killed and very similar to how a sorcerer throws fury, right? And uh, they kill steal that or snipe, 
fury snipe that that kill right i'm rolling up to a group now i'm not going to kill that steel uh, or steal that kill just by throwing reaper's mark on the target but what i am going to do is get a big heal and um, start my major berserk timer and so um, also I might help them secure the kill by putting major fracture and major breach on the target but this ability in itself does no damage to the target so I'm not stealing kills I'm just securing my major berserk um, so that way I can start um, tearing off uh, some damage to people this helped bring the build together especially in the current tanky meta that we're at right now and like I said, Ballista, now <laughs> it doesn't matter which bow ultimate you run, but uh, if you run this one or you run the other one, the other one you're stuck in a channeled effect. The tooltip is much higher, but you're stuck in this channeled effect and you can't do nothing else. And I'd venture to say that I could probably do about the same damage, if not more damage than the, the other morph because of the fact that I can drop this on the ground and then continue my regular rotation, right? and that's super valuable to me i want to cc a target and especially in an outnumbered situation magnum shot my initial target hit them with a reaper's mark to strip their resistances or we they've already got reaper mark on them right reaper mark on them magnum shot them hit them with a ballista and then start fighting the other guy because the guy that i put a ballista on if they're smart they're going to try and avoid the entire damage of ballista by dodge rolling twice you know dodge rolling two or three times to avoid the entire damage so while they're dodge rolling burning their stamina trying to avoid that massive burst plus they just got up they cc broke them the hard cc I'm, I'm burning their stamina and prepping them for a kill here shortly now if ballista happens to kill them because i have them marked i'm going to get this major berserk buff to finish the other target off and so situationally that's how we're going to fight outnumbered we're going to put people in that type of a position uh where we're burning one stamina and, and they're marked and their resistances are stripped and um but because we have crazy recoveries on this we can fight like that against multiple people i'm not a fragile bow ganker right uh, i'm a nord <laughs> with really strong resistances and i get ult gen when i do take damage and um so i thought that that was pretty interesting back bar <clears throat> Relentless focus is definitely the play on that. We need something if the fight goes long against somebody. We're lining up rotation. They're very beefy, whatever it is. Um, and we, by the time I'm through my entire rotation, I magnum shot and put this into them, and we're chopping into them. This is going to be ready to go on my back bar. I switch to that, pop it off. Like I said, the buff tool tip on that will be 19k um, so it's going to be an 8k to 12k you know 8k regular hit to 12k crit on most people um, and that's going to be enough to finish them off and um, leeching strikes is pretty important of a sustainability and it's super low cost so i wouldn't want to play this ability or this build or this play style without leeching strikes and um, so we've talked about shadowy disguise and these other things here. But anyways, um, I really like where this is at. Um, like I said, we are a Nord and stalwart and rugged passive are pretty important. And the food that we are running is the expensive stuff, uh, smoked bear haunch. It's going to give us max health, health recovery, and stamina and magicka recovery. If you want to go sugar skulls, you can. Your re recoveries, you can see that your stamina and magicka recovery are going to drop by 300, um, but you're going to gain more max stats. So if you don't feel comfortable operating at 24, 22,000 max stamina, um, and you want an extra 4,000, go for it. But I could tell you that the recoveries on this build are ridiculous and it, it, I could operate probably with five even 5k less stamina uh, how quickly things get back in the tank and we are a stage two vampire on this I wouldn't go higher than a stage two um, I also probably wouldn't go lower and go to a stage one but you can see our health recovery even at the eight uh, when it was buffed up and we get the thousand um, health recovery from eternal vigor when we drop under uh, 50 percent health and so we're at 1800 1900 health recovery under 50 percent health and that that makes us very combat bowman type two um but stage two vampire um we have some 
increase costs with that and we do take some extra uh, extra flame damage so you want to keep that in mind but stage two is important because of this passive here strike from the shadows when you leave sneak or invisibility or mist form your weapon and spell damage is increased by 300 for six seconds and that is why when we buff up and we go to our bow bar, you can see that we're at 3,000, but the second our lethal arrow and everything starts landing, then it goes up to 3,400, you know, uh, damage. And like I said, we can get another 400 weapon damage with some changes, so if you want to be closer to 4K on this build, you could. That wouldn't be that, that hard to do. Um, and... Um, Darkstalker is a pretty important passive as well. Um, you definitely want to pick that up. Anyways, um, get all your class passives as always and uh, get all your weapon abilities as always. Uh, very important. And um, on the two hand bar, since we're only using the two hand bar for rally and the burst heal, um, you don't necessarily need all these if you don't want them. That's not really that big of a deal uh, because we are a five medium to heavy you're only going to need the first three passives for heavy armor and you'll need all of them for medium armor and um, I can tell you another thing too that I need to work on on this and my buddy Icy has actually a guide on how to power level your ledger main so that way you can reduce your sneak cost but this gets all the way up to a reduced sneak cost of 40 percent and so because we got the ring of the wild hunt and uh, while we're moving around we move very quickly and you can see our stamina is going down um, it's not going down super fast but could you imagine if it were going down at minus 40 percent like it would barely move at all right and so that would be one reason that you would want to I'm just moving around hidden right now uh, relocating around the battlefield not even burning magicka to um, stealth you know I'm just hidden and all you'll do is hit shadowy disguise and then hit crouch and as soon as shadowy disguise is done you are now hidden right um, so good information to know about how to play a combat bowman anyways let's jump into the CP wrap this up and stick around I've got some BG footage while I was testing all these different builds and it's just gonna be a hodgepodge or mixture of different things Jumping over the Apprentice, we have zero points. Jumping into the Atronach, we got 72 points into Master at Arms. It increases our direct damage by 23%. Uh, 72 points into Precise Strike, so the critical damage that we do from Stealth that's guaranteed is going to hit 23% harder in CP scenarios. And we've got an extra 4,500 physical penetration, that's great. 64 points into Mighty, so we're doing extra physical poison disease damage, and we do all of that. 72 points into Ironclad, all of the biggest hitting a games for the mo uh, all of the biggest hitting attacks in the game for the most part are direct damage, and so this is how you cut that damage. And I got 60 points into Spell Shield for an extra 4,400. Um, spell resistance and 60 points into medium armor focus for an extra 4400 uh, physical resistance and there's a rhyme or reason why I do that I've actually talked about it in other videos um, but that is definitely the way you want to go quick recovery we got 64 points into that so our healing received is increased and then I used a point dump here uh, reducing damage from light and heavy attacks I don't plan on getting hit by a lot of those but let's reduce it 20 points into warlord to cut a little bit of the cost off of our break free um, if I wanted to put one point in the siphoner that'd be great uh, 60 points in arcana 60 points into moon calf and uh, we've got 53 points into shade so that way our sneak cost is reduced by 27 percent and we've got 48 points into tumbling to reduce our tumbling or dodge rolling cost by 18 percent and 29 points into befoul to increase our uh, healing reduction by another 17 percent and so that's good right now that is the cp everyone be safe out there and enjoy the footage thanks
Thank you.